Estonia, where digital dreams meet medieval streets, where every song tells a tale of freedom, and the skyline blends towers with tech. This is the history of Estonia. As the ice glaciers retracted thousands of years ago, they revealed a landscape that would become Estonia, setting the stage for the first settlers to move in. These early inhabitants, Finno-Ugric tribes, laid the foundational stones of what would become a rich tapestry of Estonian history. The Estonians first entered the annals of history through the writings of the Roman historian Tacitus, who mentioned their trade connections with the Roman Empire and beyond. The societal structure of early Estonia was organized into regions, each overseen by local chieftains. These leaders made decisions in consultation with assemblies of free men, a testament to the early forms of democratic governance. From the 9th century, Vikings from the east navigated through Estonian waters, marking the beginning of centuries of interaction that included both trade and plundering expeditions from Estonia towards Sweden and Denmark from the 11th century onwards. Throughout the 11th to 12th centuries, Estonia faced repeated attacks, particularly from Russian forces in the southeast. During the same period, German and Danish incursions, driven by a desire for conquest, eventually adopted a religious pretext aiming to Christianize the still pagan Estonians. Estonia, alongside the other Baltic regions, became a focal point for European knights engaging in crusades. In 1202, the German bishop Albert established the Sword Brother Order in Riga, marking the beginning of a significant period of conflict. The Estonians faced defeat at the Battle of Viljandi by a coalition of German knights, Latvians, and Livonians, leading to the southern part of Estonia falling under the dominion of the Sword Brother Order and the Bishop of Riga. To quell resistance in northern Estonia, the Germans enlisted the support of Danish King Valdemar the Victorious, who successfully conquered the region, including Tallinn. Despite the conquest, Danish colonization did not ensue, and following several Estonian revolts, northern Estonia was sold to the Teutonic Order by King Valdemar Atterdag in 1346. For centuries, German rule persisted in Estonia, with many cities joining the Hanseatic League and prospering through trade with Russia. Initially, Estonian peasants maintained their freedom, but over time they were subjected to serfdom, burdened with increasing labor obligations. The Reformation began spreading in the Baltics around the 1520s, undermining the Teutonic Order's authority amidst growing threats from Russia and the united Poland-Lithuania. To the east, Tsar Ivan III of Russia had annexed Novgorod and, in a strategic move against Livonia, which included southern Estonia, erected the Ivangorod Fortress in 1492, opposite the Teutonic Order's Hermann Castle in Narva, a key trading city. The situation escalated in 1558, when Tsar Ivan IV, known as the Terrible, invaded Livonia, capturing Narva and Tartu. This invasion led to the dissolution of the Teutonic Order's state, plunging the region into turmoil. Efforts by the Order's knights to ally with Catholic Poland-Lithuania against the Russians were hindered by opposition from Protestant Germans. Consequently, Denmark acquired the islands of Dago and Ozel, along with Vik on the Estonian mainland, in 1559, reshaping the region's political landscape. In 1561, Swedish forces led by King Eric XIV captured Tallinn, marking the onset of Swedish rule in Estonia, initially limited to its northern regions, while the southern areas became part of Poland-Lithuania. Despite Ivan the Terrible's persistent ambitions, his efforts to conquer Estonia were thwarted, culminating in a decisive Swedish victory at the Battle of Narva. The ensuing decades saw Estonia as the focal point of numerous conflicts, notably during the period from 1558 to 1629, characterized by extensive destruction and suffering. The Thirty Years' War saw Sweden, under King Gustavus Adolphus, extending its territory to include southern Estonia and Latvia, effectively consolidating Swedish control over Estonia, especially after Denmark relinquished its last Baltic islands to Sweden. Under Swedish governance, German remained the lingua franca, with the German aristocracy and the autonomous cities preserving their privileges. Although Swedish immigration was minimal, some Swedish nobles acquired estates in Estonia, transforming it into a crucial grain supplier to Sweden and securing lucrative Baltic sea trade revenues. A substantial Swedish military presence in Estonia and Livonia served as a strategic deterrent against Russian aggression. The 17th century witnessed the introduction of several Swedish reforms aimed at diminishing the German nobility's influence, including regularization of serf obligations, the promotion of compulsory literacy, and the establishment of a university in Tartu. Efforts to translate the New Testament into Estonian and mandate Estonian language proficiency among clergy and officials were part of these reforms, which varied in intensity with each reigning monarch. Despite these efforts, 
the German nobility retained significant local influence, yet this era is nostalgically remembered in Estonian folklore as the good old Swedish times. The Great Northern War brought additional hardships to Estonia, including crop failures, plagues, and constant military engagements, leading to a drastic population decline. Charles XII's initial victory at Narva in 1700 was short-lived, as his subsequent focus on Poland allowed Russian forces to gradually assert control over Estonia. By 1710, Tallinn's Swedish garrison had surrendered, ending Swedish sovereignty and ushering in a new era of Russian dominion over Estonia. Under Tsarist Russia, the Baltic provinces were granted a measure of autonomy, allowing young nobles to pursue careers in the Russian military or bureaucracy. Estonia was designated as a distinct province, with the south forming part of Livonia. The post-war era facilitated economic recovery, yet Russian rule imposed stricter conditions on peasants, sparking numerous uprisings. Despite the abolition of serfdom in Estonia, peasants remained largely landless and subjugated by landowners. Reforms in the 1850s enabled peasants to purchase land and abolished compulsory labor, culminating in peasants owning 40% of the land by the century's end. Educational advancements among the peasantry diminished Germanic influence, particularly in urban areas where Tallinn experienced a notable rise in its Estonian populace, buoyed by industrialization and railway expansion. The University of Tartu emerged as a hub for Estonian nationalism, particularly against the backdrop of intensified Russification efforts in the late 19th century, which sought to impose Russian language and culture. The Russian uprising of 1905 had profound effects on Estonia, with demands for autonomy leading to a brutal suppression of a workers' rally in Tallinn that resulted in 60 fatalities. The unrest spilled over to rural areas, targeting German estates. Despite the upheaval, the establishment of Estonian representation in the new state Duma and the founding of Estonian private schools were significant achievements. The Russian Revolution of 1917 catalyzed the end of Russian dominion over Estonia. Estonian political factions unified in their call for autonomy, integrating Estonian lands into a single province governed by a provisional administration. Despite opposition from the German aristocracy, an elected council contemplated but initially set aside the idea of complete independence, opting for self-rule within a Russian framework. However, the November 1917 Bolshevik coup in Petrograd dramatically altered the political dynamics, compelling the Mapayev to proclaim Estonia's full independence on November 28. Concurrently, a nascent Soviet movement in Estonian cities led to the ephemeral formation of an Estonian Soviet Republic, quickly quashed by Bolshevik forces, which also dissolved the Mapayev. In February 1918, following the Bolsheviks' dismal electoral performance, revolutionary units emerged, targeting the gentry and adversaries. The Bolshevik hold was disrupted by the German military occupation, forcing the Bolsheviks to evacuate Tallinn. Amid this turmoil, Estonia declared its independence on February 24, 1918, under a provisional government led by Konstantin Petz, although this was temporarily thwarted by German control. The March 1918 Treaty of Brest-Litovsk and a later accord in August compelled the Soviet government to abandon claims on Estonia, leaving it under temporary German rule. The German withdrawal later that year precipitated a Soviet onslaught, culminating in the declaration of the Estonian Soviet Republic in November, recognized by Moscow, but met with resistance. Supported by British naval forces and Finnish volunteers, Estonia repelled the Soviet advance by January 1919, securing its sovereignty. By February, Estonia had solidified its independence, officially acknowledged by Soviet Russia in the Tartu Peace Treaty of February 1920, marking the birth of an independent Estonia. Following its independence, Estonia faced the dual challenges of reconstructing its war-torn landscape and overcoming economic adversity, notably the loss of the Russian market. The nation embarked on rebuilding efforts and forged vital trade links with the UK and Germany. The landmark 1919 land reform radically altered land ownership patterns, diminishing the German aristocracy's hold doubling the number of farms and nationalizing forests, thereby fueling a cultural resurgence and enhancing minority rights. That same year, Estonia laid the groundwork for democracy with the establishment of a parliamentary republic through its June 1920 constitution, despite the political volatility that ensued. The political arena was dominated by the Conservative Farmers' Party, the Liberal People's Party, and the Social Democrats, with influential figures like Konstantin Petz, Jan Tonison, and August Rai shaping the discourse. The Communist Party's attempt at insurrection in 1924 was quickly quashed, marking a period of significant unrest. The 1930s economic crisis struck Estonia with severe unemployment, plummeting agricultural prices and fiscal strain. Political divisions 
hindered the formation of stable governments, leading to the fascist League of Freedom fighters advocating for a strong presidency through violence, culminating in Konstantin Pat's coup in 1934 and the ushering in of a mild dictatorship under the Patriotic League. The 1938 constitution enhanced presidential powers and established a bicameral legislature, setting the stage for a governance that balanced between autocratic tendencies and democratic reforms. Internationally, Estonia sought to maintain its independence and neutrality, joining the League of Nations in 1921. However, its security concerns were largely overshadowed by regional disputes and the indifference of Western and Scandinavian countries. Efforts at Baltic unity and security, including the Baltic Entente and non-aggression pacts with the Soviet Union and Germany, proved insufficient in the face of geopolitical threats, underscored by the 1939 German-Soviet Pact. At the onset of World War II in September 1939, the Soviet Union forced Estonia into a military alliance, establishing Soviet bases within its territory, a fate shared with Latvia and Lithuania. Despite initial Soviet promises of sovereignty, by June 1940, under the guise of military conspiracy allegations, the Soviets demanded and secured a larger military presence and a pro-Soviet government in Estonia, leading to occupation and the establishment of a Soviet-aligned administration. President Petz was deposed and deported alongside widespread arrests and deportations of Estonian leaders and citizens. When Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, Estonia fell under German occupation, initially seen as liberators by Estonians, only to realize the absence of greater freedom. The Germans executed thousands, including a significant portion of the Estonian Jewish population, and mobilized Estonian youth for labor and military service, including the Waffen-SS. Thousands fled to Finland. Many voluntarily served in the Finnish military against the Soviet Union, rather than fight directly for Germany. As German forces retreated post-Stalingrad, Estonians, under the last lawful Prime Minister Yuri Uluots and provisional leader Otto Tief, attempted to reclaim independence on September 20, 1944, but by September 22nd, Soviet forces had entered Tallinn. By the end of November, all of Estonia was occupied, and Estonia became a Soviet republic again. Over 60,000 people fled, about half to Sweden. Many perished at sea. From Sweden, many were later extradited to the Soviet Union. The subsequent Soviet reoccupation saw further deportations in the late 1940s, particularly related to agricultural collectivization. During the Soviet era, the 1950s marked a period of enforced communist conformity in Estonia, characterized by the replacement of local Estonian communists with those favored by Moscow. The integration of Estonia's economy into the Soviet plan system catalyzed industrial expansion, increased Russian immigration, urban development, and the implementation of collectivized farming practices. Although the standard of living initially improved, exceeding the Soviet Union's average and reaching its zenith in the mid-1970s, it began a downward trajectory in the 1980s. The 1960s brought some liberalization, including the introduction of ferry services to Finland and the ability to access Finnish television, which saw Estonians assuming prominent roles within the party and state apparatus. Yet, the late 1970s witnessed a resurgence of Russification efforts, inciting opposition from Estonian intellectuals and sparking widespread unrest, notably student demonstrations and a significant labor strike in Tartu in 1980, as well as the detention of political dissidents throughout the 1980s. The ascent of Mikhail Gorbachev in 1985 and the launch of Perestroika ignited a wave of movements within Estonia advocating for democratization and independence. Initially spurred by environmental concerns in 1987, these movements quickly broadened to embrace issues of national sovereignty and cultural identity. A critical development was the founding of the Estonian Heritage Society in 1987, which played a crucial role in revisiting the nation's past and addressing the impacts of Russification that had reduced ethnic Estonians to just 62% of the population by 1989. The drive for independence gained further impetus with the formation of the Popular Front of Estonia in 1988. Initially supportive of Gorbachev's reforms, the front rapidly shifted its focus towards advocating for Estonia's full sovereignty, culminating in the iconic singing revolution. This era, distinguished by large-scale singing gatherings that united hundreds of thousands, became a defining moment in the Baltic quest for independence, symbolizing a collective yearning for freedom and national identity. In June 1988, a monumental rally in Tallinn attracted 150,000 participants.
catalyzing a pivotal shift in leadership from Karl Vaino to Vaino Velias, who showed a propensity for supporting independence. This period also saw Arnold Rutel's embrace of nationalism. Estonia's audacious move to prioritize its legislation over Soviet laws in November 1988 was deemed unconstitutional by the USSR. The enactment of a new language law in January 1989 designating Estonian as the official language, alongside the creation of the International Front in March 1989 by staunch communists and Soviet adherents, highlighted the growing rift between ethnic Estonians and the Russian minority. The 40th anniversary of the German-Soviet Pact on August 23, 1989 became a historic moment as nearly two million people formed a human chain across the Baltics, echoing a unified demand for independence. Today, two million residents of the Baltic states linked hands to protest not only what happened 50 years ago, but to send a message of defiance to Moscow today. Here's ABC's Jim Laurie. A human chain of protest. In Tallinn, the Estonian capital, hundreds of thousands turned out to mourn what they see as their loss of independence 50 years ago today. Using radio broadcasts to coordinate their chain, people all across the Baltic states formed a line for nearly 400 miles. It stretched from Estonia through Latvia to Lithuania. This act significantly altered Estonia's political trajectory, leading to the Supreme Council's denouncement of Soviet annexation as illegal in November and resulting in pro-independence victories in the 1990 elections, with Edgar Savasar assuming the role of prime minister. Despite facing hurdles such as the legacy of Soviet-era institutions and pro-Soviet rallies, Estonia continued its stride towards autonomy, culminating in a March 1991 referendum that resoundingly favored independence. The quest for full sovereignty accelerated following an unsuccessful coup in the Soviet Union in August 1991. Swift international recognition ensued, and Estonia, alongside its Baltic neighbors, was admitted to the UN. In the wake of independence, Estonia revisited its 1938 constitution and in 1991 adopted a new one, instituting a robust presidential parliamentary system. This new constitution, ratified by a public referendum and enacted on July 3, 1992, heralded the re-establishment of Estonia as a sovereign state, embarking on a new chapter in its national history. Following its declaration of independence on August 20, 1991, Estonia faced the daunting task of transitioning from a Soviet-style planned economy to a market-driven system, contending with the aftermath of industrial shutdowns and significant demographic shifts. The resignation of Edgar Savisar gave way to Tiet Vehi's provisional administration, which made the bold decision to introduce the Estonian Kroon in June 1992, defying World Bank and IMF advice. This currency, pegged to the German mark, played a crucial role in stabilizing the economy curtailing inflation and enhancing the availability of goods, setting Estonia apart from other former Soviet republics. The adoption of a new constitution in June 1992, ratified through a public referendum, and the conduct of the first post-Soviet election in September marked the commencement of a fresh chapter in Estonia's governance and economic policy. The election ushered in Leonard Mary as president and Mart Lahr as prime minister, heralding a period of substantial economic reform. The Lar government initiated bold measures, including privatization, deregulation, and the implementation of a flat income tax system. Although these reforms initially resulted in increased unemployment, corruption, and crime, and saw inflation spike to 90% in 1993, by 1994, there were clear signs of economic recovery, signaling a move towards greater stability and growth. 1994 also witnessed a tragic event in Estonia's history, the sinking of the passenger ferry MS Estonia on September 28 during its voyage from Tallinn to Stockholm, leading to the loss of 852 lives. This disaster not only shocked the nation, but also had a profound impact on Estonian society and its sense of security. It was one of the worst disasters for his country in modern times. Estonia's reinstatement of pre-Soviet citizenship laws, which required naturalization for many, especially Russians, strained relations with Russia, viewed as discriminatory. This issue, linked to the withdrawal of Russian troops, found resolution in 1994 when Presidents Yeltsin and Mary agreed on troop departure. Further complexities in Estonia-Russia relations surfaced with disputes over the border entangled with the 1920 Tartu Treaty. These tensions escalated when Estonia aimed to reference this treaty in a new border agreement, leading Russia to retract its approval. The Soviet occupation also sparked internal strife within the Estonian Orthodox Church, prompting many members to seek refuge in Sweden. 
Post-independence in 1991, the exiled church sought to reclaim its properties under the Constantinople Patriarchate, initially causing friction with the Moscow Patriarchate. However, this rift was eventually resolved, allowing both to operate in Estonia. The Moscow Patriarchate gained use of several churches, including the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral in Tallinn, for a nominal fee of one euro per year. In northern Estonia, access to Finnish TV provided invaluable insights during the transition period in 1991, capitalizing on cultural and linguistic ties with Finland. <laughs> Supported by Sweden and the USA, Estonia negotiated Russian troop withdrawals, aiming for swift integration with the West, particularly the Nordic countries. Despite efforts to join the Nordic Council, Estonia prioritized EU and NATO membership, achieved in 2004 following pivotal agreements and a successful EU referendum. Under Tiet Vehi's leadership and successive prime ministers, Estonia embarked on substantial reforms, transitioning to a market economy and embracing digital governance. The tenures of Arnold Rutel as president and Andris Ansip as prime minister witnessed notable advancements in digital innovation and economic reform. Navigating the challenges of the 2008 financial crisis and attaining OECD membership in 2010, Estonia's dedication to cybersecurity, emphasized during President Tumas Hendrik Ilves' term, faced challenges such as the 2007 Soviet monument controversy, which ignited ethnic tensions. The incident, triggered by the relocation of a Soviet war monument in Tallinn, escalated to violent riots, predominantly among the ethnic Russian population, followed by cyber attacks on the Estonian government and media websites. Tensions even reached Moscow, where protests targeted the Estonian embassy, abating only upon the temporary departure of the Estonian ambassador. Estonia's economy rebounded post-crisis, significantly bolstered by the IT sector, while the adoption of the euro in 2011 underscored its deepening European integration. The nation's educational achievements garnered international acclaim notably topping the 2018 PISA survey in Europe. By 2015, Estonia met NATO's defense spending goals, responding effectively to regional security challenges and hosting over a thousand NATO troops by 2021. The historic elections of Kirsti Kaljulaid as the country's first female president and Kaja Kallas as prime minister underscored Estonia's progressive trajectory. Today, Estonia stands as a global exemplar in digital governance, innovation and education cementing its dynamic role on the international stage. A land dominated by crusaders and strong neighbors, fighting its way to independence, not through violence, but song and courage. Finally, to be free and transformed into digital prowess. That was the history of Estonia. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe for more. And as always, please carry on, or as the Estonians might say, Tasa Sowad, Kaugele Juad. Good morrow, traveler. Pray, lend thine ear to mine humble request. If thou wish to stay thy sword and keep peace within thy lands, I beseech thee to subscribe forthwith. Tarry not, for those who heed not may find themselves at the mercy of a crusade. Subscribe and be spared, for chivalry and goodwill shall reign supreme.